Ready? Here we go. And today is March the 19th. It's a Wednesday. No, it's a Tuesday. Dang, I got off early today. I'm not used to getting off early. I've been working myself to death, uh, putting in a ton of hours. And we've changed up things a little bit. And um, so I got off a little earlier today. Kind of nice, which is good. I've been uh, burning the, the daylight oil. I don't want to say burning the midnight oil because I ain't been up at night. But you guys know what I mean. I am feeling better. I sound better. I don't sound like I'm congested anymore, which is a great thing because I was feeling pretty doggone nasty. Um, <clears throat> I got a couple things going on here. Pretty interesting. Uh, I got an email from the Google, from Google Local Guides. Um, apparently, when I'm on a truck with other drivers as a trainer, we are often looking for a restaurant and we have to punch it into the app, into the Google Maps app. And a lot of times we work places that are brand new, or we work places that are out in the country in the middle of nowhere, or we're trying to find a place and they may have the wrong address, you know, somebody punched in the wrong number, or they got the wrong phone number for the place, and I'll find that out because. I figure while I'm riding there, I can kind of straighten some of this stuff out. There is an edit function on Google Maps. If you go to scroll down to the bottom, there is always a thing down there that says suggest an edit. And sometimes that allows you to grab the pen on the map and move it to where the place physically is, which is good because it highlights you in, in blue and it shows you where you are when you go to do it. Um, there is also a function on there for you to add a new location so you can actually take photos you can upload photos you can do all of this stuff and I've been doing this now for years uh, been using Google Maps probably God since it started I guess uh, I don't exactly know when it started but with the iPhone comes apps and with my job we all discuss what you know what do you use what it, what, go, what works good for you the thing I like a lot about Google Maps is that everyone can update their information. Like you can send updates from anywhere with the correct stuff so that in the future, if anybody goes to go back there, it'll help them find the place a little better. And I figure, you know what? I figured it out with help, you know, with a, with another person here. I might as well update it now so that when I go to come back here, I probably won't remember all this information about the name of it or the street or the weird alley we got to go in to get there or any of that other stuff. And if I can put the information in now, then that would be super helpful for the future. And it'll help out my my fellow coworkers, and it'll help the business. Because let's face it, if you've got a new business, you may not be very technically savvy, and you may not know how to tell people, hey, we're a new location, and we'd like for you to come check us out. And if you upload the thing when you're there, then people in the future, if they go to find it, they can just type in, you know, restaurants near me. Because there's a category thing, restaurants near me, and it'll pop up. So in a way, it'll help the restaurant as well. Um, probably the one that I have, have talked about and promoted the most is King Hefe Taco here in Florence. Uh, they're downtown, and I remember going there when they first opened. Well, not as they first opened, but within the first couple of weeks. And I noticed that, I w first off, I wasn't exactly sure where it was at. And when I typed in King Hefe Taco into my phone, uh, I didn't know how to type it, so I used the voice thing and I just said King Hefe Taco. And a suggestion came up, but it wasn't the location. It was a location in the neighborhood, but it wasn't the building. And I was like, why didn't they? Whoever went through the trouble of uploading this got most of the way there. They just didn't finish it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure to move this. So I went into the edit function and I moved the thing over. And then it had some photos that people had uploaded. At the time, they only had like four or five photos that people had uploaded. Well, I was in there having dinner and I was like, this is really fantastic. I love the way the building is built. I love the way it's shaped. I love everything about this place. The food is fantastic. The food, when it comes out, looks better than the pictures that you could think that, you, that it, it looks better than it should look. I mean, a lot of places you see the picture and you go, I want that. And then when it comes, you're disappointed. This is completely opposite. This just, you know, you're like, I, I want to try this. And then when it comes out, you're like, ooh, I got to take a picture. It is picture-worthy food that is also delicious. And it's at a decent price. Um, it's a fun atmosphere. It's a fun, funky little taco place. Um, I tell everybody they make gourmet tacos. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to fill you up because the, the ingredients are good quality ingredients. And 
they just they do a lot of fantastic stuff, man. And you guys may know if you've listened to this podcast or you've watched me on YouTube, you've seen one of the co-owners, Kyle Hardy. He's been on here and uh, he's discussed the restaurants and uh, they own a couple of them and and they're especially proud of that one and and with good reason. But while I was there, like I said, I uploaded a bunch of photos of my experience. And when I've gone back, I've also tried to upload extra photos. I don't exactly know how it happened, but somewhere along the way, Google started sending me updates saying, hey, by the way, your photo has reached 10,000 people. Hey, by the way, your photo's reached 80,000 people. Hey, by the way, your photo's reached 250,000 people. I'm like, who is looking at these pictures? Who is looking this up that they're looking at my pic? That I we're in Florence, South Carolina. I think if if we did a census today, I think the last census was in 2016. We had 39,000 documented residents in South in Florence, South Carolina, and I think we're probably double that now. I mean, we grew a lot in the last couple of years due to good location, good weather, and a lot of companies moving here, and bringing their businesses here, and companies expanding here. Um, it's still not 250,000 people. I don't know where all these people are coming from, but but wow, holy cow, I can't believe it. And I can't believe that I had some small part in, I guess, sort of, you know, bringing some attention to them and hopefully some business. My whole goal was I just want people to come here because I want this place to succeed so I can keep coming here because I like coming here. It was a selfish reason. It was my personal selfish reason, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to do what I can to make sure these guys succeed. And I feel like, you know, I've said this before, I feel like a lot of people just go through life poo-pooing on everything. They're just like, I hate that. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a comment about how, how angry I am about that. And I'm going to be vocal about my disappointment and how outraged I am. And, and I'm even guilty of that. I've made some YouTube videos. I'm not, I'm not above it. I'm just saying, there's so much of that. Every now and then you need to go out of your way to praise things that you like or to, to commend things that you like or to, to lift up things that are doing what you want or what you'd hope. You know, when I had the opportunity to go look at Teslas, I talked on and on and on about the Teslas because I think they're the wave of the future. I think that the electric vehicle is going to be the coolest thing in our lifetime. I mean, as cool as my iPhone is and as cool as the internet is, I think electric vehicles are going to be the coolest thing. I'm just saying. I mean, granted, the internet allows you to access everything in the world, and the iPhone allows you to stream all of that content to you personally. The electric vehicle is going to change the way we get around. It's going to change the way we move. And I like promoting them. I like, I like talking about them. I like, I like, you know, I, I want one of them. I want a car. I want to, I want to. I want a Tesla one day. I'm just I'm putting that out in the universe. You know, I heard Bert and Leanne talk about it one time. They said you can't have anything in life in life unless you verbalize it and you put it out there in the universe. You just gotta you gotta say it. You gotta speak it into action. You gotta say this is what I want. I'm gonna make this happen and then do it. So I believe firmly in that. I believe firmly in you know you have to declare what it is you want to do and then follow through. Life is about follow through. So, I said all that to say this. I got an email from Google saying, hey buddy, uh, we want you to, here it is. This November, apply and attend Connect Live 2019. This November, the biggest event in Google Local Guides is coming to, Ho to San Jose, California. Apparently they're located in San Jose, California. Connect Live. Since you've made it to level 5, I didn't know I was at level 5, but that's pretty cool. Since you've made it to level 5, you're invited to apply. We'll be hosting our most passionate creators for an all-expense paid trip to Google's campus. You'll get the chance to share tips with other inspiring local guides and meet people behind your favorite features. Connect Live 2019 will be held from November, 20, November 12th to 15th and will be delivered in English to best serve our global community. To get the most out of the event, you must be comfortable speaking English. Be sure to submit your application before April 30th of this year. And it has a button that says, apply now. Now, when I'm reading through the things I got to do to apply, um, you know, obviously the first stuff is just simple. It's like, your name, do you speak English? What other languages do you speak besides English, you know, if necessary? Well, what nationality is your passport? Because they're inviting people from all over the globe. 
Um, what country do you live in? Will you be 21 years old by the date of this thing? Which gender do you identify with? That'll be fun. If uh, What documentation will you need if you have to travel to the United States? Well, I'm in the United States, so that's not a big deal. Okay, here's the part that I'm interested in. Applicants are required to share a video up to 60 seconds. That means you can't go over 60 seconds. Up to 60 seconds with their application. Please select one of the following prompts for your video. Okay, so here's the three ideas they gave us. Tell us about your favorite place and what makes it special. Well, I can talk about King Hefe Taco. Hello. I just did 10 minutes on it. <laughs> What's one thing you want everyone to know about your community? I mean, I could see how people could do a 60 second video about their community. And why are you proud to be a local guide? Well, I could do 60 seconds on that too. But I think, uh, I think I would be most excited about talking about my local taco shop. Now, it's a 60 second video. Do I need to, to, should I go Casey Neistat style and just have clips of the restaurant and of the food and of Kyle and of the fun stuff that's going on there and the, the cool, you know, decorations and then splice it all together into one video and then have me dialogue it as it goes? Or should I just point the camera at my face and talk? I don't know. It says, please share your link to your application video on YouTube or Google Drive. Applicants are required to speak on camera in English. If using YouTube, the video may be unlisted. If using Google Drive, be sure to submit the link and hit share. Okay, that's not a big deal. I can do that. Then it's got a thing on here for, um, tell us what you love sharing on Google Maps and why. And that would be good because I can list off some things here. It gives you like room to type and, and I'm an information guy. I can, I can give information. Uh, create a new list on Google Maps and share the link below. For example, seven wheelchair accessible restaurants in Mumbai. Great spots to listen to live music in Tokyo. The best burgers in NYC. It can be about any theme, but be sure to include a title description in at least five places. Hmm. I may have to do one on, uh, I don't know. Five places. What am I going to write about five places? Uh, should it be about my my hometown here of Florence, South Carolina? Five great local places to grab a bite to eat if you're traveling through? I don't know. i got to think about that one. And then it says, in a few sentences, tell us about your local guide's involvement. Responses must be in English. Involvement. Involvement. My involvement, I guess it means. So, the things that I do. And then it says, in a few sentences, tell us why you want to attend Connect Live 2019. Okay, I can do that. And then it says, if you're on Twitter, please share your link. If you're on Instagram, please share your profile. If you have a blog, website, or have been published, please share relevant links. Oh, good. I have those. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you for listening to the Stuff I Heard podcast. Um, <clears throat> so, the thing i got to figure out is the video, the 60-second the video. Now, here's the thing. I can just point the camera at myself and talk for 60 seconds and give a lot of information and probably do it in one take because I'm a one-take guy. Now, I don't know if you guys have paid attention, but I literally just turn this crap on and just start talking. My wife pointed out something very humorous to her. Uh, recently, I was talking about the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movie that uh, just came out recently, and I talked about how I like Chris Pratt in it, and she said, you, you gave the wrong line, and I was like, what? She texted me, and she's like, you, that's the funniest part of the movie, but you gave the wrong line, and the, the line you gave had me cracking up when I listened to it, and I was like, what did I say? And she's like, I don't even know, but it wasn't the right line, and I was like, well, okay, so if you didn't listen to the last episode, here's the deal. In Jurassic World, um, you know, the dinosaurs are loose again, and there's a volcano that's going to kill all the dinosaurs, and Ron Howard's daughter is like, we got to go save the dinosaurs, and she goes to him because he can talk to this one velociraptor named Blue, and he, she's like, you need to come help me because she's the key to everything, and only you can 
yeah, help me, Obi-Wan, you're my only hope, or something like that. And so he's like, I don't, I don't want to go. It's a terrible idea. It's not, there's nothing good's going to come of that. They're going to go extinct. Just let them go extinct. It's, it's how it should be. And she's like, no, 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 I need your help. I need your help. Come on. So he goes, okay? He gets all sentimental about the dinosaur. Oh, my buddy. So he goes. And in the movie, they get in a precarious situation, and he has to go out where the dinosaurs are eating people, and he has to go do something heroic. And he turns to her and he says, just remember, if I don't come back, I didn't want to come. And they kind of share a grin and giggle, and then he walks out. And I thought that was hilarious. I thought it was so funny. My wife wasn't even watching the movie. She was. She had her, her pillow up on the side of the couch, and she had her feet in my lap, and she was reading something, and she heard that, and she giggled. She's like, ha, 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 See, because it was funny. And I had a prediction that I thought it was all Chris Pratt. I thought it had nothing to do with the writing. I thought he just said that out loud, and they thought, oh, that's too good. we got to leave that in there. I mean... And I don't know what I said on the Blast podcast. Listen, we all make mistakes. You get what you pay for. This is a free podcast. So if you guys feel like you can do a better job, I, I just I encourage you to turn on the microphone and begin yammering and see how it turns out. But be prepared because you will have people come up to you on a random basis, people that you don't even think listen to your podcast, and they'll go, hey, by the way, I like the podcast. You got this part wrong. Thank, thank, thank you for your help. Thank you. Th- th- thank you. So, you know, it's a process, right? I'm learning. I'm learning as I do this. I'm learning as we go along. And hopefully I'm getting better. Hopefully I'm making some improvements. I am making some mental notes on stuff like my volume. Uh, I got a text message from my buddy Byron. Byron's been on the podcast before. Uh, he's like, hey, buddy, I don't know what's going on with the, with the volume here lately, but your sound is way down. I was like, really? I was like, I have to look at that. Part of it was my sinus infection, but part of it, honestly, I wasn't turning my knob up high enough on my little soundboard over here. I got a soundboard over here that just, I, I didn't twist the little knob to the right little notch. And I got to make a, I got to make a mental note of how this sounds. So, Byron, when you listen to this, call me or text me and let me know, does this volume sound okay? If it does, just remind me that I have this at a six. So, there you go, a little inside baseball to from from me to him to you to us we are the world we are the children anyway um (coughs) stuff i heard okay so i haven't done a whole lot of listening to anything other than i listened to leanne kreischer's podcast about sex it was part three uh she had on one of their family friends a guy named steven uh, his wife has been on the podcast a good bit on the wife of the party and she had on Bert, her husband and it was a very interesting conversation and you know Bert is a comedian so he's making jokes in the process but it is a, it's a fun listen and it's a lot of information and she's done episodes in the past getting the female perspective and this was sort of a guy's perspective and she talks about the fact that it's interesting that you know guys usually don't want to talk about this kind of stuff especially if their wife is out there, or if they have a job in Hollywood like Steven does or some of their other friends, they wouldn't want to talk about it because they don't want people knowing their business. And I get that. I totally get that. Um, There was a movie I watched once called Forget Paris, and in it, Billy Crystal is dating uh, some girl. I don't remember her name. And... His friends are asking, you know, about the about him dating her, and he's like, uh, "So is it serious?" And he goes, "Yeah, it must be." He usually tells me everything, and he doesn't he hasn't told me anything about her, which is which is interesting, because I found that to be true about my own life during that time. Um, when I would just date someone, you know, I would be a, a typical guy and just talk about you know our relationship and whatever's going on, and I didn't care. I didn't. It, it was like whatever. You know, this is what we're doing. This is. This is how it's going, you know, she's crazy or whatever. Um, but then when I started getting invested in my wife, like, from day one, I didn't talk about it. I didn't feel like it was anybody's business but mine and hers. Any Anything about our relationship, other than the stuff you see from day to day, our interactions with each other and our interactions with people we know. I figured the rest of it wasn't their business. And... You know, you tend to share that kind of stuff um, 
more intimately. And the fact that these guys were willing to go on a podcast that, let's face it, can be listened to by everyone on the planet and openly talk about things like that. It was it was it was, it was an interesting podcast to listen to. Um, so from that, uh, I listened to Bert's podcast with a comedian named Drew Lynch, and Drew has a stutter. Drew has sort of a mousy voice. Um, I looked him up on YouTube, and he's hilarious, uh, mainly because of his stutter, and he's learned how to turn his stutter into comedy, and it's it's hilarious. The podcast is a lot of Bert talking about himself, but Bert mentions in there that he has a problem stuttering, which is interesting. Uh, I talk openly about the fact that when I was younger, I had a legitimate problem stuttering. And I do still, at times, when I'm extremely tired, it comes out once in a while, and I have to remember what I learned in speech therapy, and I have to take a deep breath and think about what I'm going to say and say it out loud. So, listening to them do it, I would emulate them in a way later on. I noticed that I was having conversations with people and I was starting to stutter and I was like, God, we are so malleable as people. We are so squishy and influenceable that we just go along with things that are part of our environment. You know, when I was in the Marine Corps, we used we used the F word as a comma and it was before and after almost every word to the point that everyone around us was like, "Hey, can you tone it down a little bit with the with the cursing?" And I'm like, "I didn't even know I was doing it." Like, I would, I would apologize and curse while I'm apologizing. So, we're all creatures of habit. We all get in a rut. We all emulate the people around us. Um, when I was in Southern California, I had a lot of Mexican American uh, friends, and. They called that. They called me out on the fact that I started to talk like them, and they were like, "Yeah, but in your accent, you sort of sound like like uh, Cheech and Chong gone to Georgia." You know, <laughs> it's like that's fair. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize I was doing that. I apologize. Uh, and even when I'm on a truck with guys now, they comment on, you know, "Where are you from? You ain't from around here, are you?" And I'm like, "Well, actually, yes, I am." But I guess they're not used to hearing people use all of the vowels or enunciate, which is a little off-putting to some people, uh, especially if their only involvement is with their own family. So, you know, all I'm saying is we have the Internet. There's no reason for any of us to be stupid anymore. We can learn from anybody and everybody. All we have to do is click around and, and start watching stuff and start talking like them and start just start doing some research okay the world is not flat don't buy into that research that's stupid those people are not your friends you need to, you need to just shut that negativity out in your life um, <laughs> uh, okay so let's switch gears a little bit let's talk about Netflix okay I am watching a show on net or I have watched a show on Netflix called Northern Rescue it had William Baldwin in it now most people are really familiar with Alec Baldwin. He's in all kinds of stuff. He's like a big time superstar celebrity guy. He even has a, a game show on TV. Don't ask me what game show. I don't know. That's not that. This is not that podcast. Um, but William Baldwin, I had a hard time remembering what I'd seen him in. I know I've seen him in movies in the past, like back in the 90s. But I don't think he's done a lot of work since then. Or if he has, it's just stuff I'm not watching. But he's good in this. This is uh, Northern Rescue... Um, not to give the whole show away, uh, in the preview that they show you, uh, basically the dad is a, is Mr. Baldwin, William Baldwin. Um, he's older now, you know, he's gotta be, God, he's gotta be near 50. I think in the, in the show they actually say at one point that he's 51. I don't think it's his real age, but it could be. I'm not going to look it up. You guys look it up if you're that curious. I know right now my wife's like, oh, come on, now i got to look it up? I don't I don't even care. And then she'll look it up. He is 51, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so, in this, he is a dad with three kids, and he has a rescue job. Like, he is 
one of these superhero guys that like rescues people from the sides of mountains and from you know burning buildings and stuff like that and and his wife passes away and he's a single father with three kids and he's trying to figure out how to make it and the kids are very interesting and unusual and quirky in their own special little ways and it seems to be dialogued as a narrative by his oldest daughter which is cool each of the kids are really good actors um, the story is done really well the even though the wife dies in the first episode she come she is in all the episodes because let's face it you know you you gotta have that memory you gotta have that part to be the narrative because it informs who the characters are and what their involvement with each other are and what their involvement with the mom is and how their how the loss is affecting them none of that gives a show away okay the show's a good show uh, I don't know that it's a family show but it might be if you have teenagers but it's good it's it's done well um, it probably is a family show come to think of it for for today's climate and, and the way kids are exposed to just about everything, there is some drinking uh, in the show, some, some underage drinking, and uh, for some people that's off-putting to their kids. They don't, they're like, I don't want my kids to see that. Um, and perhaps some language at times. But, like again, the story is good. It's only 10 episodes. I want to say each episode is about 45 minutes. But I binge-watched this on Saturday. I wasn't planning on it. I had uh, I had grilled a um, uh, blah, 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 blah. come on Josh what's the word I built a uh, grilled a corned beef I did this really cool recipe where I grilled it and then put it inside of a uh, aluminum envelope and then poured a beer in there and, and closed up the envelope and then cooked it the rest of the way and when it got done it was all steamy hot and fresh and I put it into a into a cooler and let it soak in that. Uh, with blankets around it in the cooler for several hours and I took it out and cut it open it was just soft and tender and mmm good mmm but then I also cooked some ribs I cooked a rack of ribs that was fantastic and I screwed that up <laughs> I actually cooked the ribs excellent the, the ribs were delicious but I used a rub on it that I, the only thing that I that I read in the store was that it said no added or no sugar and I was like okay good no sugar and when I sprinkled it on there, I didn't bother testing it. It was called uh, Bad Byron's Butt Rub. And it's got a picture of a little pig on it. And they sell it at Sam's, which I was like, all right, cool. We got a good price for some decent rub. And I didn't read the ingredients. But when I got them done, I tasted it, and it set my mouth on fire. And I was like, what? What is in this rub? I started reading the ingredients. One of the ingredients is... Um, Chipotle seasoning, and then it has in parentheses smoked jalapeno, and I went, oh, oh, that explains a lot. Smoked jalapeno. Yep. Totally know why my mouth is on fire now. Awesome. So, anyway, um, we ate some of it. Uh, we actually rinsed the stuff, the the seasoning off of the others, and ate some more. But I took a good bit of them to work and kind of shared with the guys there. There's a lot of guys there that like the hot stuff. There we go. Um, so, <clears throat> anyway, I said all that to say this. I cooked all day, and then I started watching this show. And I watched this show nine episodes straight. I mean, all of, all of them except for one. And it was getting late, and I was like, I gotta go to bed. I gotta go to church in the morning, and I gotta... I'm tired. And I don't want to watch the last episode because it's coming up to a climax. And I know that once it once the final episode's on, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, you know. So uh, I waited for the next day. I got up the next morning, got ready for church. I had a little time to kill, exactly 45 minutes. I went in there and I watched the last episode. And it was good. It was really good. I see them making more episodes out of this. I don't know how they're going to extend it more than like three or four seasons. But it's pretty good. And I don't think it gets a lot of mentions. I don't think a lot of people talk about it because it, you know, let's face it, William Baldwin is not Alec Baldwin. And to be honest, he's the biggest star in the show. But there are a lot of other stars. These kids are going to be big stars. There's other actors in it that look like stars. There's a woman in it. I don't know. I, I read her name, but I can't tell you what her name is. She's like the co-star of the show. 
she's an adult lady who's blonde. She looks a lot like, um, oh, what's her name from uh, South America? Um, not Scarlett Johansson. What's her name? The, 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 the chick, the supermodel actor lady. Oh God, now I'm drawing a blank. This is the part where people freak out. This is where my wife right now is going, I can't believe you can't think of her name. She's in that movie that you like with the thing and the people in, in the... She's good with names. I'm terrible with names. God. What's the... Right now, I'm looking it up on my phone. Because I know she was in the movie Monster. Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron. <clears throat> she looks, this woman in this show looks like Charlize Theron. She could be a body double. She could be a face double. She's probably played her in other movies when, you know, they, they got, sometimes they hire actors to like stand in whenever they're doing lines because the, the, the big time actor don't want to redo lines. So they have someone that looks like them stand with their back to the camera. So like from here around the silhouette of their face kind of looks like them, but it's, it's not them that she could do that. She could do that easily. She could do it with the camera facing her, and you'd think, oh, yeah, Charlize, there you go. Charlize, they're on. There you go. Anyway, sorry I took you guys on that little random thing. This is where my wife goes, see if you wrote down notes, you'd have all this information. Baby, if I knew I was going to talk about this, I would have it written down. I didn't know I was going to talk about this, so there you go. You get what you pay for. My buddy Greg is doing research, by the way, to do his podcast. I don't know what his name is going to be yet for it, but it's going to be about bourbon. And <clears throat> he is a very studious guy, so he's doing homework. He wants to have facts ready to go. So, good for him. When he gets it going, I'll talk about it, and I'll probably be on it. And I'll probably have him on here to talk about it as well. So we can send him some traffic his way and some love and... Who knows, man? Maybe he'll hit on something that you guys like and you guys can share and be a part of and maybe be a part of his podcast, too. You never know, man. You never know. So, anyway, I got to figure out what to do for a video. I got to make a video and I got to submit it to this Google Guides thing because I would really like to go to, to San Jose to Google headquarters and attend a meeting and talk to them about, you know, how I want to help affect change. Um... There's one thing they don't do, and I wish they would do, is I wish they had a truck situation on there where you could tap it, and if you're driving a semi-truck, it would help you avoid the bridges that are overweight and the ones that, uh, avoid the overpasses that are too low for you to drive under. Like if you could put in the height of your vehicle, because not only would it affect trucks, it would affect RVs too. You could put in the height of your vehicle and just avoid all of those interpasses. That should be an option. So that's going to be what I'm going to try and promote. Don't steal my idea. I said it here first. Okay? Okay. I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for listening. Love you guys. Take care. We'll do this again uh, either Friday or Saturday. Bye.